We're here to present our framework for evaluating defensive player coverage. As a motivating example for our work, see this play where Stefan Diggs is covered by Tremont Williams, who falls down in the middle of the play and is nowhere near Diggs when he eventually catches the touchdown. This play illustrates some of the issues that we see with the traditional ways of evaluating defensive back performance. In particular, the fact that the only defender who's analyzed on a given play is whoever was closest to the targeted receiver at the time the ball arrives, which is a flawed approach for a number of reasons. Additionally, we don't have an easy way to differentiate between man and zone coverages. With these issues kind of in the back of our mind, we wanted to devise a new soup to nuts framework for evaluating defensive backs while improving on these concerns. And the graphic that you see here on slide four provides a high level overview of the process that we took to get there. We use this framework to break down our project into three more manageable steps. So first, we identify whether a defender is in man or zone coverage. And based on that, we try to identify which offensive players a defender was responsible for at different points throughout the play. And finally, when we have an idea of what a defender was trying to do, uh, we apply a suite of model-based metrics we have developed to evaluate that player's performance. So the first step, identifying man and zone coverage, uh, we adapted an approach uh, proposed in a paper by Yurko, Ventura, and Dutta, and ended up using clustering techniques. For man coverage, the player only covers one single offensive player during the play, so we think he's defending the closest player over the course of the entire play. For zone coverage, he could be covering different players, so we use sequential modeling. The idea is that, based on the movement of the offensive players, we model how he transitions from defending one player to another and how he moves accordingly. Here is the sample play. The black line is the defensive assignment identified by our model. You can see how it changes as the play involves for some zone coverage players. Now that we've identified who a defender is responsible for at each frame of a play, we implemented an in-play modeling framework, borrowed in part from Burke, Yerko, and Evans, among others, to evaluate a play. The in-play modeling framework takes as inputs the location, speed, and orientation of all players at a specific frame, and outputs for each receiver at each frame the probability of being targeted, given they're targeted, the probability of a completed pass, given a completed pass, how many yards we'd expect them to gain, and then taking into account the game state and play information provides an estimate for the expected points added. To illustrate one of these model outputs, we show a short Matt Ryan pass to Julio Jones. In the plot, we show the routes of the five eligible receivers. Each dot represents a location of a receiver at a point in time and is colored by the target probability. On this play, Ryan drops back from under center, initially turns towards Freeman, then turns to Julio. We can extend this example for all model outputs to contextualize a play. Because we know which receivers defenders are responsible for at each frame, we can create metrics based on the output and significant inputs of the models. Here, we introduce a number of said evaluation metrics, breaking them into before the pass, measuring all defenders prior to the pass, and after the pass, measuring only targeted defenders with the ball in the air. These metrics evaluate different potential skills and can be separated by man and zone coverage. Finally, we will provide an aggregate of these metrics for the 2018 NFL season. Now that we have all these metrics, we can slice and dice them a million different ways depending on what question we're looking to answer. For example, on slide 12, if we wanted to say who's the best at closely following receivers, we could use our separation metric. And we see that Steven Nelson comes out on top among qualified defensive backs for the 2018 season. Or if we wanted to know who's the best defender in man coverage, we could average rank across all of our metrics and then we'd see Stefan Gilmore of the Patriots coming out on top. Then we could do the same for zone coverage where we'd find Marlon Humphrey at the top. And pretty impressively, he's actually in the top five in both our average rank in before pass metrics and after pass metrics. So these are just a few examples of how our analysis could be used. We know our work isn't perfect and that there are certainly areas for improvement, but we hope that our framework provides a solid foundation for the football anim analytics community to build on moving forward. That's all we have for you today. You can find more of our work and our contact info at model284.com. Thank you for listening to us and go Vikings.